All right, so there is another statement. For the same name, by this time we said, permit 20, permit. The 20 is the second, second sequence number. That will be fine traffic, which do not meet the above category. You understand it? After that, I have to apply that route map on a distribute list. Last week, we treated distribute list. So we understand distribute list. And this is how to do it. Router EIGRP50 distribute list. Then I referred to the route map that I just created and I applied it on this interface, E1. Let's see, where, where is E1? So I'm here. The configuration is going on here. I did a distribution list and I applied it on this interface, E0 slash 1 in or inbound. That any traffic which is entering inbound on this interface, that route map should apply. And what does the route map say? Let's look at the statement again. The route map says, you are going to match every external route, and what you do to it, you will deny it. After that, you permit any other network. That is what the route map is saying. So we are very sure that if we define a route map like this and apply it on a distribute list, it will take effect. Okay, so each time you define a route map, it shouldn't end there. You either apply it on a distribute list or redistribution or policy-based routing or BGP. We have a lot of places where we can apply route maps. So let's do the configuration. Let's do the configuration. So we are on R2. Now let's verify again. R2 is receiving every route, including the external route, and we want to block it from coming in. So global configuration mode, configure terminal, and route dash map. Let's say, let's call it no external. Okay, no underscore external. That is the name. Just bring a question mark. A question mark says you can either deny or permit. In this our case, I want to deny. Deny what? Another question mark. It says enter a sequence number, and that's the range of sequence numbers. So I choose the first sequence number and I enter. Now I'm inside the route map mode. I have to match. So match. Let's look at the options. Uh -huh. The options are a lot. You don't just map IP addresses. But as you know, if I'm teaching, I don't have to bring all these things in. It will confuse you. So we take it one at a time. So the option that we use when we were, I was doing the illustration was this option. Okay, match IP. That is if you want to refer to an access list. You see, now what are the other things that you can match? AS path is in BGP. Community is in BGP. Uh, almost all the match criteria are in BGP. But in our case, we are looking for this. Route type. We are going to match route type. So we enter route type and bring a question mark. The question mark says, we can match external routes for, for BGP routes, EIGRP and OSPF. We can match all these external routes. We can also match internal routes if you want to. So the options are here. So we are matching external. And a question mark. 
This question mark says we can enter. But supposing we are doing OSPF, we can go on further to match external type one and external type two. OSPF has different types of external route, but because we are not doing OSPF, we end there. So enter. So we have just matched external route. Just that. We didn't set anything. Okay, we have only categorized traffic. So you still on the flexibility of route maps. Once you match traffic, you are not strictly advised to set something. Okay, you can just match as in you, you have categorized the traffic and move on. So here we have only matched external route. We haven't set any uh, restriction or anything to be set on this uh, match criteria. We just ended it there and let's exit. After exiting, it shouldn't end there. So what about routes which are not external? What do we do to them? There has to be another sequence for the same route map name. So route map, and which name did we give to it? Which the name is no external. Let me copy and paste. This time, permit 20. That is my second line. And I'm permitting all other traffic, which are not external routes. Because if I don't bring, okay, let's forget about this traffic. Let's forget about this command and see what will happen. Okay, let's leave it at that. And let's apply the route map to the distribute list. So router EIGRP50 distribute list. Route map. Then we name our route map, no external. Then we don't want it inside interface E, zero slash one. Sorry. It says in E, zero slash one. We don't want it inside. We have just applied our distribute list on this interface here this interface, okay? So all the, uh, the routes that R1 is sending to R2, we applied it on this list. Let's see the effects by showing the routing table of R2. So show IP route and watch. Hmm. You see, it's denied all other traffic. Our purpose was to prevent the external routes, but it ended up denying the 100 traffic as well because we didn't bring that last statement. Yes, so now let's go ahead to bring the last statement on that route map. So configure terminal route map and the name, sorry. What is the name? No external, eh? Route map no underscore external then permit twenty. That's the second line. Let me just verify. Show route map. Show route map. Okay, this command will bring this output. Show route map. I have this route map called no external, and my first sequence number is 10. And I have one match criteria which says I should map match external routes 
and there is no set clause. I have not added any set clause. Nothing. Then, for the same name, no external. There's my second line of se second sequence. I didn't match anything. In, si in simple terms, I'm allowing all other traffic. So now let's check the routing table of ARC2 again. So show IP routes, and there we go. We are now seeing just the 100 routes. The external routes are gone. So you see one of the applications of route maps. So flexible. So flexible. We have used route maps to prevent external route. As Robert is saying, Robert wants to know why we are preventing external route. Robert, that's not our purpose. Our purpose is to have hands on on the route maps, okay? Let's look at the question again. Okay, so display the routing table to confirm R2 doesn't have any external route. And it's true, we have displayed it. That is it. There's no external route. So the other thing is we should reverse all the commands that we just entered. Okay, we should reverse as if everything is normal. So let's reverse. The question is kind of drilling us. Let's reverse. So we did a configuration on R2 and we have to reverse it. If you are not so sure what you did, if you are not so sure, just show run. Show run and the output will tell you everything that you've done. So our show run statement says, on router EIGRP, we just entered a distribute list that we have to undo. We have to take it off. We also have some route maps here. Name extender. We also have to take this off. Yes. So let's first of all take off the distribute list under the EIGRP process. So configure terminal. We go to the router EIGRP process. Router EIGRP 50. Then we say no. Let me copy the distribute list command. I'm copying the whole of this one because that's what I'm going to take off. No, enter. I've taken it off. So let's show the routing table again. Do show IP routes. You see, we are now receiving the 200 network back because we took off the distribute list. Also, we've been told to take off every, every configuration that we just did. So the route map statement must also go. Do show run. We have to undo these statements, this route map statement. So we did that configuration on the global configuration mode. So we have to come to the global configuration mode and say no routes map then we copy the name and put it there so that route map is gone let's verify do show run on the eigrp you have taken off the distribute list and there's no route map statement everything is gone so we have reversed our configuration. Let's move on. Number four, it says configure R3 and R6 and R5 with OSPF area zero. We haven't done OSPF yet, but don't worry. You are CCNA students, so that shouldn't be a problem. Just the basic configuration. Okay, just the basic OSPF configuration. All right. 
at that, it says we should redistribute both routing protocols into each other's domain. So let's bring up the topology again. This configuration will be done on the border router. Wait for my pen to come up, please. All right, that is the border router here. This interface is running AIJP, which we have configured already. We only have to configure OSPF here. OSPF configuration is so simple, area zero. So on R3, global configuration mode, configure terminal, then router OSPF, you bring a process ID of let's say two, 10 or anything. Mm -hmm. These numbers must not be the same on all the routers. It can be the same though, but it mustn't be. Then network, we are going to advertise this network, 20.0.0.0. And the wildcard slash 30 is that, followed by area zero. That's all we do on our thread. So we have added this interface to the routing process. We come to R6 and do the same. On R6, configure terminal, router, OSPF, process ID, it can be different, but me, it's advisable to use the same number. Why? Because if you are troubleshooting, if you have different process IDs, you're kind of confused. It works for me. I always use the same process IDs because it eases troubleshooting for me. So network, I'm going to advertise just the directly connected networks. 20.0.0.0 and a wildcard of slash 30 and it's in area zero. Then, then, the zero, the zero, the zero with its wildcard and area zero. That's all I'll do on R6. R5 to just one interface here. I'll advertise it inside OSPF. So let's do the configuration. Hello, are you there, please? Nice, are you there? Yes, we are here. All right, so I'm inside R3. Configure terminal, router OSPF. Let me use a process ID of 10. Let it be two. Network 20.0.0.0. So this wildcard, and it's in area zero. That's all I'll do on R3. Let me save. I go. On R4, no, R6. Let me verify whether I have all my IP addresses. So IP interface brief. Yes, the IPs are there. So I'm configuring OSPF. Router OSPF 10, just the directly connected network. So 20, area zero, 
and net. Area zero. Okay, so it just discovered a neighbor. Don't worry, we, we, we will treat um, OSPF. By this time, just the basic configuration. I remember telling you to go and revise, right? So, <laughs> I'm very sure you all did. R5. Enable show IP int brief. Yes, we have just one IP address over there. So, enter the global configuration mode. Router OS PF2. What went wrong? OS what? S2. OS PF2. Network 10.0.0 and the world card of this we are zero. Okay. So we just discovered a neighbor. All right, let's talk about something called redistribution. I know you know it already, but I don't have to assume that you know it. Okay, so I won't assume that you know redistribution. I know all of you know. So in this topology, we have two routing protocols each one in its own domain. Two routing protocols running on this topology, each one in its own domain. So inside the EIGRP domain, as it stands right now, you are not going to see any routes from the OSPF in only any of the routers routing tables, you will see. The same way, inside the OSPF domain, they're not going to see any network from EIGRP. So this EIGRP domain, if I open this router here, router two, I'm not going to see the 20 network, neither will I see the 10 network. Because they are speaking totally different language. But on R3, R3 is serving as a mediator. You can see everything in there. OSPF domain you can also see everything in the EIGRP domain. Unless you instruct Altre to send what he's seen inside EIGRP, inside OSPF to EIGRP, and also what is seen inside EIGRP to OSPF, then all these routers will begin to see each other's routing table. We call that in redistribution. So on R3, router OS PF, which number did we use here? Two. Um, don't enter a different number. Once you have chosen two here, that's what you have to follow. That's part of the main reason why I like using one process ID for OSPF. Because if you're not careful, you have to keep on referring to the number that you use. Then I say redistribute EI JRP number 50. Once I do this, all the routes here will now enter this router and that router. But these guys are still not seeing 
everything from the OSPF. Unless I exit and router EI JRP 50, then I say bring in, redistribute means bring in, redistribute OS PF. Two. Now we have redistributed, but it's something that I want to discuss on redistribution. We know that EIGRP has a way of calculating its metric using the bandwidth delay load. Reliability and maximum transmission units. So, this OSPF route that we want to bring inside EIGRP domain, this route that do not know anything about all these parameters, what do we tell them? We have to tell them something. What do they use? It's like you going to um, <laughs> Korea. You don't understand their language, but they are bringing you inside. What do you do? There should be some protocol. So you are going to assign metric values over here. Router EIGRP, you are bringing OSPF routes inside your network. What should we use for the bandwidth? What value should be used for the delay and the load, reliability, and MTU? You would like to refer to this interface here. All the values are there. That is, if you prefer to use all those values, they are there. So on R3, let's check interface E0 slash 1. That's R3. We'll show interface E0 slash 1. And these are the parameters. The bandwidth, 10,000. Maximum transmission units, 1,005. The delay value is 1,000. Reliability, 255 over 255. 255 over 255 means the link is very reliable. If you see something like 1 over 255, it means it's not reliable. Now we have the load, transmit load and receive load. 1 over 255 means the link is not loaded at all. It's so, it's so cool. The link is very good. It's not loaded. So that is the value that will tell EIGRP to assign to the routes that are coming from OSPF domain. So over here in this redistribution, I'm going to enter all these parameters. So let's go ahead to do this configuration on R3. So we are here, R3. Configure terminal. Router OSPF2. Redistribute EIGRP 50. Before we even do the redistribution, let's check the routing tables. So on this R5, let's see whether we are receiving this 30 routes from the EIGRP domain. We shouldn't see them. R5. So IP route. This is all we are seeing inside R5. 
And let's issue the redistribute statement on R3. Redistribute 50, here JP 50. And let's go back on R5. Good, now R5 is receiving some external routes from the EIJP domain. Isn't it beautiful? It says, I don't know all these routes here, but come on. I'll receive you. We can see some external route, E2. We have E2. What is the meaning of E2? I'll talk about it. So we are receiving all the routes from the loopbacks, you remember? Loopbacks on R1, the 100 and the 200 network, they are all being received by this router here in the OSPF domain. That is so beautiful. But we continue to see E2, external type two, external type two. Even though we have not done OSPF, I'd like to explain the E2 and E1. All right, now let's come to R1 to see whether it's receiving any routes from the OSPF domain, the 20 and the 10 network. Are they being received inside of R1 and R2? Let's check. So R1 show IP routes, and we are not. They are not receiving this 20 network. Neither are we receiving a 10 on R1. Watch. Because we haven't redistributed the OSPF inside EIGRP. We are going on R3 to do that configuration. So R3, let's exit, and now we go to router EIGRP 50. Now we say redistribute OSPF, meaning bring OSPF routes inside. And OSPF, the process ID that we've been running on R3 is two. If you enter any other number, it won't work. Now, if you enter, it says what? It won't work. It won't work in a sense that we have not configured the parameters that I explained. This OSPF routes that are coming to EIGRP, how are we to calculate their metric? So let's go up again and the question mark says, let's enter this keyword, metric. So for this metric, what value should we assign for the bandwidth? Remember, the value on this interface here was 10,000. So we would like to use that. So let's use one, two, three, 10,000. Bring another question mark. The sentence is asking at which value do we want to use for the delay? On that interface, we had 1,000, so let's use 1,000. And another question I say, reliability. What do you want to use? 255 means very reliable. One means, no, not reliable at all. Let's assume our link is so reliable. And what about this one? The bandwidth that we want to use, what? It says what, load. The load on the link. We want it to be very effective, so one, and what about the MTU? Let's use 15,500. We enter. So now, these routes here are now comfortable inside the EIGRP domain. This and that. They are all comfortable. So let's go to R1 and check the routing table to see whether we are receiving those routes. Show IP routes. And yes, we have seen some external routes here. We are receiving the 10 network. And we are receiving the 20 network. So our life is good. Everything is going on fine. 
things are working. You see, we haven't connected any pieces on our routers because we are doing more serious stuff. Pieces are for end users. Once you can ping from a router, you shouldn't be bothered pinging from a PC. So let's go back to the question. It says, configure R3, R6, and R5 with OSPF, which we have done, and redistribute both routing protocol into each other's domain, which we have done. So I've copied the centers here. Good. I've copied them here. What I just did. Now let's look at the fifth question. Using route maps allow the 110 x.x .x network from R1 to come inside the OSPF domain as external type one. Note, this config must be done on the border router, R3. Do we understand the question? See, let's go back to the routing table again. Is here. We could see that on R5, this router here is receiving all the routes here as external type 2, OSPF external type 2. Let's log on R5 and check. I mentioned it earlier on. It says the 100.x.s are all external type 2. Even the 200 are all external type 2. And watch, let's take notes. OSPF deals with cost as its metric. So inside the brackets here, we can see the administrative distance and the metric. The metric is cost. On the interface, we can see that the costs are the same for every route, no matter how far they are. Have you realized? We know that the 100 route is very far. Came all the way inside this router. But this router has assigned a constant cost to it. 20, 20, 20. Why is it so? Let me explain the difference between external type one and external type two. So that when you get to OSPF 